Not all heroes wear capes. And this one loves wearing cotton shirts. He came to this world at this hospital nine years after it was founded by the Rockefeller Foundation. And he just left us at this hospital, which owes its birth to the Yo China Association. Like these two hospitals that bracket his life, he has a mission. Fending off the horrors of famine for not just his own people, but anyone and everyone in the world. He is a fighter, not just against starvation. He's a rebel against formalities and rigid rules. He's more at home in the open field out there. His open mind and dare to doubt spirit more than tripled China's rice output within the space of five decades. All while urbanization and soil degradation eat into China's arable land. He is known to one in five human beings on earth as the father of hybrid rice. His name is Yuan Longping, Yuan being his family name. Now don't let his small build and simple demeanor fool you. He is the man who's touched the lives of billions of people, the farm policy of China, and the global grain trade. If you can't make sense of the outpour of grief in the rainy streets of Changsha and on social media, if you are falling into the lazy habit of calling it commie brainwashing, let me give you a fresh perspective. Professor Yuan's switch from the dominant Soviet theory to the Mendelian school of thought on heredity and genetics took more than the usual combo of an open mind and three ounces of courage. Because this is the China of 1950s through 1970s that we're talking about here. The Trump era politicizing of science would pale next to it. Professor Yuan worshipped nothing. He believed only in solid data, hard toil, and being a humble student of the pioneers that came before him. His access to research literature was tenuous. His initial funding meager. But his dedication to freeing people from hunger was firm and his grit unrivaled. Sure, as some insist, luck played a small role in his team's discovery of the naturally mutated male sterile strain of rice after a painstaking two-year search, which initiated because he predicted its existence somewhere out there. It's harder to pin it to luck, though, that he stayed humble and hungry for improvements. Success brought fame and numerous prizes. For a weaker mind or bigger ego, the celebrity status would spell a premature end to his research career. Professor Yuan stayed focused on his beloved breeding trials and put on no airs. He demanded simple receptions wherever possible. Food waste, too often inherent in lavish feasts, agonized him. It doesn't surprise anyone that he was still working in the field, checking new strains in the rice paddy on the island of Hainan at the age of 90. He pursues the next big breakthrough with a burning sense of urgency. Higher yield, better taste, higher tolerance. It is a sad surprise though, that the wizened but spry man gave in to multiple organ failure a few weeks after the fall. The father of hybrid rice loved each breed as dearly as you would your own child. Watch the childlike excitement as he retells his dream about this super hybrid rice. As long as my life is going on, I never stop pursuing and dreaming for super high yield of rice. I heard you had a beautiful dream. Ah, that's true. Several years ago, I had a dream. I saw my super high rice plant as high as the sugar and the pinnacle as large as the boom and the grain as big as the pillars i was very happy and i wish my assistant to rest under the pinnacles this and his granddaughter's recollections of him are two 
of my favorites in the sea of tidbits on Chinese social media right now. The girl in the middle is saying that her daycare or preschool teacher asked her, "Do you know who your grandpa is?" I had no idea. I'd say he's the guy who never misses the day of weather forecast. Yuan, it's time. Give me one more hour. What for? So my people can finish lunch in peace. This dialogue is fictional, but his care for carefree meals is real. He stayed true to his mission, his passion. His adventures were full of twists and turns, but he never lost his compass. He's left for a better place, and left us in a better place. Grandpa Yuan, have a good journey. <laughs>